What's going on, my people, my people? <laughs> How are y'all doing today? B- welcome to another episode of Through a Culture Lens. My name is Michael Anthony, and of course with me as always is the incomparable Ambrose, who also knows how to parallel park a train. What's going on, Amber? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great sleep deprived, but I am here. I am engaged. I am ready to chat. Let's mm-hmm. do this. How are okay. you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, it's, uh, you know, the weather is, you know, of course, breaking, you know, um, yeah. you know, we're getting at April showers and everything going on, but it's cold too. I mean, they, they, we got tricked. We had some warm weather. Now we're down to cold. I'm just like, okay, they seesaw. We're on a seesaw. I know. I know. But today we have a special guest yes we typically do. we go through the industry news but we got a returning champion we had her on our episode when we were doing our dry runs right she was our first guest yes and we're so happy to have her back can't wait to talk to her it's gonna be a great conversation we're continuing the whole nielsen diversity report discussion mm-hmm. so yeah can't wait can't wait to to talk with her today. absolutely and of course you know the third host which is always you um, unfortunately, this is a recorded episode. As you can see, the chat right now is Neil. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, we want to keep the conversation going in the comments. So please let us know how you feel about it. Me and Amber may sneak in there in the comments as well. Um, but of course, we want to bring back our returning champion, Miss Tiffany Wright, mental health professional. Woo-hoo! And of course, she's out in LA where the weather is much nicer. How's the weather out there, Miss Tiffany? It is like 80 something degrees today. It is oh, it was 90 I'm degrees sorry. yesterday. You know I'm about it, to cut this feed. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> we can pack it up. <laughs> and it's humid. It's so strange. It's humid. Really? Is it? That's mm. weird because we're we're a dry, you know, that's a dry state. So yeah. when we get humid, it's odd. That's odd. Yeah. Mm. It is really humid. Okay. Well, well, you know, of course, we wanted to uh, bring uh, Miss Wright on because to continue this Nielsen diversity conversation, really, we wanted to talk about the mental aspects of what, you know, representation matters and media consumption and mental health and different things like that. So we wanted to, you know, get her take. So, you know, first question, Tiffany, we sent you the report for the Nielsen uh, document and Nielsen report. What was your first thoughts from a professional standpoint, if you could start there? Wow. Um, I know, hit you with the loaded question first. (laughs) Right. So, not overthinking it, I thought about scarcity. Hmm. I thought about scarcity because when it comes to any type of black media release or or media release where black people are in it, um, we as a community can be so critical. (laughs) Um, We can get really frustrated, irritated. If this applies to this part of the population and not this part, this feels uh, representative, this feels empowering, this doesn't. Um, And it made me realize why it's so many people fighting over one image at a time is because the scarcity of representation um, that exists in the media. So especially as we're going to be talking about Black women and the media today, just seeing that women as a whole, inclusive of all, you know, ethnic backgrounds or whatnot, is like 30%, and women are 51% of the population, you know, and then people of color is like 25%, right? Mm -hmm. And as a whole, we're so much more than that. Um, And then breaking down even more so like black women or black men, I mean, it's no wonder people are fighting over the images that, you know, come up. It's because we're just not being represented as much. Mm -hmm. And um, on average, like, it's unfortunate because we have been disenfranchised in so many ways that we lean into a scarcity mindset a lot when it comes to our lives and not feeling like we're enough or that we deserve joy or freedom or can have abundance and opportunity. And I know it was a very simple question, but like these are all the things that really came up for me. And it's like, no wonder we have such a scarcity mindset. Mm. (laughs) No wonder, Mm. so. And then just going into the whole scarcity mindset, it, it goes into that conversation that we had with Jay Jolliffe last week and what we've been having with it, within this Nielsen report conversation about just kind of the, the themes that we watch, the, the kind of shows that we watch. 
Because even looking at, you know, just a few, not everything was negative as far as what we watch, but just looking at a few of them, as we've talked about ad nauseum at this point, you know, black men are searching for things that have the streets in it, that have, you know, a street element to it, whereas, whereas black women are searching for things that have rivalry. So that just tells you that, like, so, you know, are we searching for things because of lived experience or are we searching for things because that's all we know that we have? To, that's all the, the medium that we've got to watch. So in your opinion, when you think about, when you saw that chart where it said black women are looking for rivalry, you know, um, themes in their television viewing and film viewing, and then black men are looking for streets. What did you think when you saw that? So clinical things that come to mind. So in addition to the rivalry, what also came up for black women was investigative. Right. Investigative for me feels like mistrust. <laughs> oh, really? Rival okay. Rivalry um, for me sounds like uh, interpersonal ineffectiveness, like challenges around relationships. Mm. And so I think of Black women often in our lived experiences having such immense challenges around trust, trusting each other, trusting our partners, trusting our community, trusting, you know, our, our leaders. Um, right, and right. then the same thing, often having challenges around uh, relationships, you know, platonic relationships, romantic relationships, also relationships with ourselves. Uh, the rivalry thing to me also represents a lot of esteem challenges. Um, when I think of, you know, black men looking to streets, I'm look, I, I think of intrapersonal dynamics, like issues around confidence, issues around esteem, issues around validation and security and what like masculinity looks like, um, issues around uh, resource allocation, right? Like if you can't get money or stability from like one thing, you're going to find the next best mm, thing, resource, which- Being resourceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. you know, um, same thing if you, have a dysfunctional family you're going to create and look for a family right which might come from the streets and like that's right the right. implications of that right so my mind just goes to <laughs> a lot of things that may not be applicable to all black people right but um definitely uh is reflective of a lot of people's experiences Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then, um, you know, about the, you know, because of course, my biggest thing, well, reason why I really wanted to bring you on is this media consumption, as far as the amount of media that we consume. Yeah. And of course, we have some reports and some graphs up here about, you know, like the amount of media that we consume and black people are always the highest per capita than any other, you know, race or ethnicity in the United States. And you had previously spoke about binge watching and media consumption can sort of have a mental health effect on that, you know, yeah. on us. So could you kind of unpack that a little bit more for me? Yeah, I or mean, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I did want to point out the the report that um, you sent, Nelson mm -hmm. report, is the fact that they acknowledge that the quality of representation matters. Mm. So like not only just the fact that you're being represented, mm -hmm. but like what the images are. Mm -hmm. yes. They understand mm -hmm. how much images mm -hmm. shape identity. Mm -hmm. And so when we are talking about media consumption, I think it's really important for people to take a step back and know that there has been decades of research around the psychological impacts that media consumption has had or has mm -hmm. on people mm -hmm. so when people say things like my music doesn't impact me video games doesn't impact me what i watch doesn't impact me what i read doesn't impact me research shows that you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> right <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. i want you to know mm -hmm. no matter how strong-willed how mm -hmm. strong-minded how assertive and confident in who you are you think you are you have no idea mm. what unknowingly shapes your perception of that's you. right and so the more that you're watching and the more of anything that you're watching consuming listening to the more that the content is 
shaping your beliefs right. and shaping your beliefs about yourself, about other people, about this world, about relationships. Like it, it really does shape you because your brain does not know the difference between reality and fantasy. All it is is constantly creating stories and filling in gaps that helps you survive. That, that's really what your brain does. And it does it in, in such a magical and mystical way that there is much that exists in our unconscious and subconscious more than our conscious mind. Mm. And if we are looking at content um, highly centered around crime, highly centered around uh, argumentative and unhealthy relationships, um, highly centered around dysfunctional families, like these are dynamics that shape us because social media is a whole other beast, right? Like we're not even talking about that today exactly. um, because, you know, people binge of media content on social media, right? So between mm -hmm. going between these narratives of like unhealthy lifestyles and um, high risky behaviors on TV and then watching little clips of stuff and then watching reviews of the stuff on the social media, it's like you are in it so much and you have no idea that it can impact fear, that it can impact anxiety, that it can impact depression, that it can impact esteem, that it can impact your sense of hope or hopelessness, right? right? It can impact your ability to trust other people. I mean, if I'm watching stuff all day about some backstabbing person stealing money from this kingpin, like, see, this is why I can't trust mother S's. Exactly. See, you can't see. That's why you can't trust people. It's like <laughs> exactly. It's true. Oh, it yeah. You. It really does. And I've said this story before on the show, but I haven't. I don't think I share this with you. It's like when I went to Paris a couple years ago. I literally was called Love and Hip Hop. They called all the black women that I was with. Oh, y'all look like Love and Hip Hop. Y'all must be on that show, you know, in their broken English, because that's the only association of black American women that they had was a show with women throwing wine glasses at each other and kicking yep. each other. And so- Listen, I had a similar experience. <laughs> I went to South, uh, South Africa. Somebody told me I talk like Medea. And then like three other people were like, oh, oh you like Cookie Lions. No. Mm. No. You, you talking about stuff exactly. like this? Y'all talking about stuff like this, ladies? A yep. This, this 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 stuff right here exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because of the scarcity like she brought up you know if if we're only if as we've already shown with the report black women are overrepresented in reality tv we are underrepresented in news we're underrepresented in dramas and all these other you know types of shows so throughout the world they're sending you know bad girls club they're mm -hmm. sending all these ridiculous shows and oh, guess yeah. who's majority on those shows black women mm -hmm. yeah so that is the theme that we get we get you know overly emotional aggressive you know fighting um you know untrustworthy just all the negative attributes and again that's like i don't see how you couldn't see how that doesn't affect you i could never sit for two hours watching bad girls club and not think i'm going to be aggressive after i leave i probably will be aggressive if yeah. i watch this show so it's it's just unbelievable <laughs> Yes, yeah. and, of, and of course, on here, on uh, Through a Culture Lens, we're here with our guest, Tiffany Wright. She was about to get into it, but just want to remind, we're talking about the Nielsen Diversity Report with the mental health professional to sort of dig into this data a little bit uh, more. But by all means, Miss Wright, hit us yeah. with some jewels. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think what's important is that people need to understand that entertainment is not just about entertainment like the creators of this of the all this content they understand um there is like a psychological equation like i'm not a film or screenplay writer or anything like that but i do know from people in the industry they told me oh yeah there's a type of equation you want it to start here and this is where the climax goes mm -hmm. and the duh, and the duh, the duh, right so there mm -hmm. is a 
a whole strategy as to how to write a romance, mm -hmm. how to write a horror, how right. to write it's a, a crime. Yep, a formula. And there's a whole formula. Mm -hmm. And like the average person watching doesn't understand mm -hmm. that there's a formula and a strategy and what and what the creators are doing are really trying to elicit a specific emotional or psychological response. So if the creators know that there is a whole psychological process going on, I think it's really important that viewers understand yeah. that they're on the receiving end of that. So this is meant, it's created, all these things are created in a way to bring about emotional experiences. So what do you think happens if you're constantly watching things that are supposed to elicit fear mm -hmm. or de elicit discomfort or elicit mistrust, right. elicit right. suspense. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> this, this is what we're watching. Mm -hmm. And as black people, we walk around with a lot of unknown fear. Mm -hmm. Like we experience fear because of our history with this country, right? If you're in the U.S., we um, we walk in fear because of maybe a lot of us come from single parent households, which automatically gives a lot of people a lot of abandonment and trust and neglect issues. OK, mm -hmm. now, even for some people that come from two parent households, you can still have a physically present parent and a neglectful parent emotionally at the same time mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so there's a lot of underlining like emotional challenges that black people have just because of our lived experience so if you have these fears if you have this mistrust um if you already have issues around esteem because you don't feel like you're good enough because you know, that's what black people are constantly taught, that they're not good enough, that they have to do twice, three times, four times the work to be able to get respected. Um, that's why a lot of them have imposter syndrome. Um, you know, you're not getting the same admiration that other people are. And then you're like watching these things that are constantly for for black women saying that you have to look a certain way, you have to dress a certain way, you have to talk a certain way, you have to do certain things for you know, heteronormative black men, you're being fed all these narratives that masculinity looks this way, security looks this way. All of these things are playing on the issues you already have around your esteem, around your identity, yes. around your sense of security in life. So you're watching these things that continuously feed the brain, the narrative subconsciously that you have something to fear, that you're not good enough, that you have to have, um, you know, your guard up or you can't trust, um, that you you can't make money in a, a legal manner. <laughs> yeah. That, mm -hmm. Or know, without a ball. Mm -hmm. or, or without a ball, mm -hmm. that you have to fit into a certain box. It's going to continue to exacerbate these unknown beliefs and ideas that you have about yourself, other people in the world. And to think that you can just innocently watch this stuff and not um, be impacted is really naive. Mm. Absolutely. And what you said was key, because I think people, when it comes to the discussion of like, why black people suffer so much in America as opposed to everybody else is some of the things that you said. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes through some of those things you said, right? So it's like, every per white asian hispanic can go through the trauma of having a single parent can go through the trauma of being abused can go through the trauma of these human experiences but we go through those traumas with 400 years of oppression we go through those traumas of day and day um you know uh just fear of police brutality day and day fear of you know all of the different kind of things that come at us so we go through the human experiences which people forget that we're human and yeah. then we go through the societal systemic racist things that people want to kind of think that oh things are getting better right it's like no right. we still go through this on a day in and day out basis and we're not saying we're walking around with like you know a cloud over our heads but it's still something that we have to be mindful about where we go you know right. we have to be very mindful still in 2021 and people don't get that that weighs on you so mm -hmm. when you're consuming this media that highlights again you know some of the things that we've gone through in the past which a lot of things these period pieces you know People were saying, you know, when like 12 Years a Slave and some of these other sh movies were, you know, coming out, you know, we're tired of the slave narrative. Like we're tired of talking about slavery. 
yeah, we're tired of it. I think there's a place for it. I'm actually one of those people that I could probably still watch if it's a story that I haven't heard of, like an actual story. I could still watch a you know a slave narrative movie, but I can understand why black consumers, you know, we're getting tired of that you know that kind of um, you know film. Mm -hmm. But we still are because we're tired. We're tired of it because of what how it makes us feel, right? It's the same thing with the stuff that we're watching currently. It's the same thing that but we're not acknowledging, right? It's like right. the power. We're not acknowledging that. We're not acknowledging that, that Snowfall might be a good show, but it still has that element of, you know, mm -hmm. violence mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. abuse and that sort of thing. So, yeah, like I've everything you and, said. <laughs> and, and, and just piggybacking on something you said, which is also what came up for me is when you mentioned, yeah, there's other groups that experience, you know, these challenges. The thing with black people is our humanity and our experience is always invalidated. Always. Mm. Mm. And, Say it again. And, and then we internalize the invalidation. Mm. That's right. And mm -hmm. we minimize the impact of everything in our lives. Mm. Absolutely right. everything we can lose people we can experience abuse we can experience disenfranchisement mm -hmm. we can experience any type of brutality and be like yeah f them but like i'm good mm -hmm. yep right I mean, and mm -hmm. so like we invalidate our own experiences and, and so we become desensitized to what we're experiencing emotionally in daily life as well as when we're watching these shows and i'm yes. saying all this not to say like don't watch these shows i'm just sharing from a place of like learn to be self-aware because if you're in a very vulnerable raw sensitive place in life and you're feeling down on yourself already or feeling like you know you're having some melancholy or sadness or you know having some esteem challenges don't be mindful of what you watch mm -hmm. like because right. what you're watching can make you even sadder right. <laughs> like, exactly right watching can like take make you have even more of a blow to your esteem yeah. you know no, no. So it, it, it's Absolutely. just a matter of awareness around what you're watching, how much you're watching, and like being mindful of its impact on you because it does have an impact. Absolutely. But, but then us as black, you know, uh, content, you know, content consumers, it feels like we can never detach from that because even if you have a black comedy, like me and Amber spoke about coming to America too. We looked at that movie as just being funny, fun, like Adam Sandler, like an escape, mm -hmm. an escape. Escape, right. But black viewers cannot look at it. They have to look at it through a cultured lens, in a way, yeah. through a black lens of, you know, uh, Leslie Jones. She's acting like the mammy role, and yeah. you know, this character is acting like this. So it's even hard for us to even have that escape because of our lived experiences, because of how we view our representation on screen and how mm -hmm. it sort of triggers this whole monolithic effect on African American people. Yeah then that's where the awareness to practice balanced consumption comes in, mm. right? Like, read a book. you don't always have to watch something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can read a book. If you don't know how to read, there's audio book. Like, exactly. there's so many ways to take in different types of media nowadays. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just about the balance of it all. Like, you know, um, these low numbers of representation that we'll, we'll probably get into mm -hmm. a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, Nielsen report, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, these these low numbers of representation of like black folks in um, in shows and streaming shows, um, you know, in newscasting positions mm -hmm. uh, is one thing, and mm -hmm. then separating it with you know black women representation versus like black men representation mm -hmm. um black women we don't see ourselves in uh the variety of roles mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would reflect the variety of lived experiences that mm -hmm. we have right? Mm -hmm. right and so it's important to understand that <clears throat> if for myself if I am a professional, mm -hmm. right, um, as a mental health professional, and I have my own way of being, and I sit and watch this reality show that completely, um, you know, shows this completely different lifestyle, it's important for me to not 
fall into this idea like, oh, wait, should I look like that? Should I be like that? Like, oh, no, that's how I should really act. Because a person might listen to this and be like, Tiffany, that's stupid. I know that that's just TV. Okay. But then, like, in reality, how many black women have issues with building sisterhood? Right. Mm. I'm sure it's pretty common. Mm-hmm. Now, I know I ain't got no problem with it, but I also don't watch these shows. Right. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't walk around talking about I can't trust to this and I can't mm-hmm. trust to that. Mm-hmm. I don't have trust issues with my friends. Mm-hmm. I've had people come to me like, Tiffany, how do you have such peaceful relationships? I don't even have the concept of like people being disloyal to me. Mm. Like that's not even a narrative that I carry. Mm. Right. Now, of course, that can be personal choices, Mm -hmm. but I don't have anything feeding into my mind that I have to walk around this world not trusting a black woman. Right. Mm. Yeah. And I have this graph up now about the disparity of like the genres of like black men outnumbering black women and like the genres of action drama. But then at the bottom where you see reality TV, black women outpace black men and as that clip that i showed you majority of the black women and amber mentioned it as well majority of black women are always the antagonists usually in these situations right Right. because even if we match up shows that come on and then people start talking about them on twitter instagram etc etc right people will comment people will comment see this is why you can't trust exactly they are trying to confirm the images that they just watched. Yep. Which is like, okay, what's chicken egg? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, is this exacerbating your idea that you can't trust another black woman? Or are you already having experiences where you feel like you can't trust a black woman and then you're watching something that's further confirming that? Right. You know, it's just really little things mm-hmm. like that, you know. And when we talk about um, the diversity and how it impacts our identity, you know, you mentioned, Michael Anthony, about, like, Black people not being a monolith, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. we are multidynamic, and we talk about this notion of the culture. Mm-hmm. But there are subcultures within the culture, right? right. So. Right. These people might respond and associate with this one narrative and it might be not applicable to 75% of the population (laughs) and and any other narrative. And so the problem is we don't have enough of the full spectrum. I think it's starting to happen a little bit more now, um, but it's still scarcity, still getting crumbs. Still a long way away. Go ahead, go ahead, Long Amber. way. I know you have a- No, I mean, she's, yeah, I mean, she's right. I mean, it's like, if, if you literally were just plopped here on earth today, <laughs> you would think that black men, let's see, black men could be police officers, because a lot of like cable shows or, um, you know, mm-hmm. broadcast shows, black men are police officers, older black men are police officers, or mm-hmm. they're Criminals. drug... <laughs> Criminals. Kingpins, <laughs> Criminals, right? kingpins, mm-hmm. drug kingpins. Mm-hmm. Corner boys. Black women, yeah, black women are... Again, reality, some sort of reality TV space. Um, Bougie. Potentially, potentially am- angry, potentially if you Materialistic. go to- Materialistic. Exactly. Uh, usually angry, because if you think of like OWN or like some of the shows that Tyler Perry has on a BET and OWN, it's usually a lot of dramatic scenes. I've never watched half those shows, but dramatic scenes. So again, it's like, you know, how, how many times can we say this? Like how many ways? It's we exactly look like you said, I know I grew up with black skateboarders. Okay, I'm, mm-hmm. we're from California. Mm-hmm. Half my friends were black skateboarders. Mm-hmm. The other half were break dancers. And then the other part, you know, the other part were jocks. Like we we are in every space, but we have one kind of view that I guess to them sells. So like in the 90s, it was like the black man was like the any given Sunday. It was like the sports hero, mm-hmm. the 80s and 90s, like the sports hero. And then now it's like- Or the New Jack City. Power, or New, New Jack, Jack City, City or the drug kingpin. And mm-hmm. now it's still the drug kingpin. Mm-hmm. Like 2000s, 2010s, it's still kind of the drug kingpin. It's like, okay, well, I know that I know may, way more black men that are professionals <laughs> that are you know, parents than, and are active in their children's lives. So it'd be nice to see more of that, but we're still getting, you know, but but then this is the other challenge, right? I've known quite a bit of shows that did not make it past their pilot season. Mm-hmm. That too. 
That and too. there have been creatives who have tried to bring about more storylines of hope and wholesomeness and joy and freedom and like lightness and they don't they don't get they don't the viewer mm-hmm. like there were, i can't even remember what the show was called but i watched it there was a show on abc like mayor some some show where this young guy i remember was, i watched one episode it was so cute to me yeah, i mean was. people call it corny but it oh was so the black cute. kid became the mayor yeah. of the town yeah, yeah it was yeah, yeah. it was okay he became the mayor mm-hmm. trying to like change things Mm-hmm. Hello, can we not get a black politician, right. young black politician on, on a major network yeah. like past the season, no. right? Like right. Mm-hmm. there's shows where people try to go at it and it just it just doesn't stick. Yeah, and actually know? that show got canceled and then he had another show called God DM Me where yeah, God, God DM was uh DMing him on his phone to give him little tasks and stuff. So it was a very uplifting show, but right. it just didn't right. just didn't make right. it past so because he didn't have that image this... of black. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So then there's this thing of, well, it takes a lot of effort for now, whether it's a white director or writer, you know, enlisting black cast and trying to Mm -hmm. tell a black story or a black creative. Which usually it is. Yeah, usually it is. Or or a black creative being able to get the green light. It's not that there aren't people trying to Mm -hmm. give another other versions of the black experience Mm -hmm. what's also happening is that we're not watching and supporting in the numbers to where networks would be like oh this is what they want Mm -hmm. that's networks networks respond to viewing as well right so we can't just uh blame (laughs) them right exactly it's a it's a two-part thing and that's and that's been my kind of frustration where it's like you know the few of us or maybe many of us that are yelling we need more diverse you know storylines more diverse characters okay but are you watching the shows like are you tuning in because without you tuning in and spreading the word nobody is going to be paying attention but then again then you have to think about it from the network standpoint are they advertising it because i don't feel like it got advertised that those shows i've watched both shit like maybe an episode of both but then i never really knew when it came on again i didn't know what day it was on and that happens a lot too that's how i felt about marlon wayne's show Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the show that he that he had with uh, Essen uh, Essen Atkins. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, really, like, with a like, divorced couple and co-parenting. Yeah, I didn't even know yeah. that they came on until like. It was a after. summer show, though. It was a summer show. Um, okay. So they so they screened it over the summer. It wasn't like one of the fall shows. Like okay. fall always gets that prime time slot, and then yeah. they come right. out with a couple of shows during the summer just to try and see if it'll pick it up to see if they want to move it to fall. So that was one of the fall uh, summer shows. But 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 even the thing around the marketing piece. I'm, I'm going to challenge that because we are now in an age where social media marketing has now become more effective than traditional ad slots. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. And all you need is some influential folks in the black Twitter community, some influencers on, uh, you know, Instagram, TikTok to do some stuff and advertisement for anything mm-hmm. will blow up, you yep. know? So it's, it, it's also about do people who have these non-traditional roles as influencers, do they promote the things that would propel us mm-hmm. forward? And I don't think all the time. Oh. I think <laughs> they still trying to chase their bag mm-hmm. and they rather have dialogue about something controversial mm-hmm. as opposed to actually push something that mm-hmm. might propel us, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. then there's yeah. this other layer of, well, where does our responsibility come in when it comes to not only the images that we sign up to be a part of, right? But the ones that like we promote. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because mm-hmm. I know that people were tearing down coming to America too. I mean, tearing it. I Damn. mean, ripping I it. Like, wow. Is it that bad? I mean, I watch Hallmark Christmas movies. I mean, I like corny. So it's Hello. Be right. You know, like, y'all was being real extra. Real it just extra. really yeah, extra. extra. I watched yeah. it the first time and I was kind of half watching it. I said, but still, this, I'm chuckling. I'm still chuckling a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so I watched it a second time. I said, you guys are just really, just right? stop. Like, just stop. When, when I saw you those know? dudes with the shake weight, 
That when it was, that, that, was, that was, I was me. like, okay, this is straight up slapstick. Y'all got to do it. But of course, as Tiffany said, uh, like and subscribe. Go ahead and share this show with right. all your people because as we continuously say on the show, the responsibility is on you as the viewer. Yeah, if exactly. you want, and just like on the last episode that we had with Miss Jay Jolliffe, who gave us actually seven focus groups that people can go to to be a part of these conversations because as you were talking about earlier, with this visceral reaction that these content makers want, when we brought Jay on, she talked about her experience of being in these focus groups and watching people and feeling the room of how people responded and that gave the cue to these content creators and showrunners um, on how to commit, you know, how to produce their content. And of course, this is through a cultured lens. This is our third part of our diversity report. We're up here with Miss Tiffany Wright. We will be um, ending off, you know, shortly because Miss um, Wright, she's a busy person and uh, we can only get her for a short amount of time. But I know one question that I had and then I will let uh, the lady of the show uh, finish us off is would you say that art imitates life or is life imitating art when it comes to black media consumption? Loaded question. <laughs> I know it was. I know. but I think it's, I think it's both. Mm -hmm. I think it's both. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, you know, we talk about these, I mean, when you're studying film and mm -hmm. television, we talk about these archetypes and stereotypes that exist. Mm. It's not that they didn't apply to someone. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't, right. they don't apply to everyone, mm -hmm. but they are based off of some person, some version of a person. Now they can be unhel unhealthily projected but there are people that do live some of these images. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of more people that don't. And so I think the challenge is when people see these images so often, they begin to overgeneralize like how much reality these images are based off of. You right. Know. But like we and, were talking about with, um, you know, when you were talking about watching reality TV and how certain black females may in their subconscious, because the subconscious really drives your behavior more than what's in your conscious mind. Right. And so right. are we absorbing things in our subconscious because of our past of us mm -hmm. being acculturated? Because, you know, slavery acculturated us into the society right. and with yeah. acculturation that is being taught how to. So that's what I'm saying is that. You know, yeah. since we're not owning any TV stations, radio stations, production companies, nothing like that, you know, if these images sort of help to influence, you know, more so yeah. than to project the reality of a community. Yeah, I think that it's that's why I just say both. It's mm -hmm. because there there are so many vessels of socialization. Mm -hmm. You know, media is one aspect or like one force that socializes and shapes us mm -hmm. it's our family it's our community it's our culture it's our religions our spirituality it's our schools it's our political systems like there are lots of forces that mm -hmm. shape our identity and i think that even though media is extremely extremely impactful i think it would be giving it too much power to say like it's the sole predictor mm -hmm. of like who we are. Okay. Um, okay. I feel like there are people who want to tell stories of images that they've seen in real life and then they exaggerate them mm. um, for entertainment purposes, you know, um, that that's part of what entertainment is, mm. right? Like you have an idea and you're like, oh, how can I make it as um, entertaining as possible? It doesn't mean that it's not actually loosely based off of reality, mm -hmm. even some things in like paranormal or suspense mm -hmm. realm, right? right? Like these are things that happen or can happen, but they're told in a mm -hmm. way that, you know, might be a little bit more extreme. Mm -hmm. um, but it media f from childhood absolutely shapes you, mm -hmm. you know, and you do end up living out the images that you see because you think that that is what I'm supposed to be because that is what I see. Mm -hmm. And if my favorite people act this way, if this is what's getting people validation, if this is what's getting people praise, if this is what's getting people opportunities, um, if I don't have 
these people modeled to me in my personal life. And I mean, I know a lot of people are like, I've never seen a, a marriage. So my idea of marriage comes from TV. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get that with my couples Cosby therapy show. clients all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, things like that. I mean, <laughs> if you don't have the teachers there, you don't have the, the, the people there in your life saying, okay, you know, there is no way to be a man, but because you don't have a father figure, you're like, oh, that's masculinity. Oh, that's what I'm supposed to do to be a man. You're going to really shape mm. yourself into that person. Mm. So in that way, yeah, you know, um, life is imitating art mm-hmm. for sure. Mm. Um, but in some degree, somebody could be like, I'm going to go into the hood and see if I could see somebody like on um, some show and then they might find it hmm. Hmm. right okay right. amber you want to give us our no, clo- uh, closing comments yeah. or questions mm-hmm. no i mean the only thing that i keep thinking of and this is slightly on topic but kind of off it's like it kind of had my mind wandering when we were talking about black people not you know partaking in like the shows that you brought up tiffany mm-hmm. like the, the shows that you know if we're asking for a more balanced kind of media representation and we're not really watching the other side of the the coin you know the more upbeat shows it just seems like we're in this kind of you know weird place as as a community because i think whenever we do get a show like even like coming to america how it was torn apart right i mean anywhere i went my aunties was tearing it apart i mean everybody was tearing it apart on social media Mm -hmm. and they were finding all the ways that it was problematic and i think we're in that space now too where everybody's dissecting the problematic Mm -hmm. aspects of everything Mm -hmm. So there's really not no way to really, you know, put something out there artistic without a group saying you've offended me, right? You've offended me, you've offended this group, you've offended that group. So I really do feel like there could be a level of people not even wanting to try so much with us, which is why we don't get anything outside of what's been working. Because if they do something different and it it ends up offending this group of people, I just feel like there's a little bit of squeamishness probably from like the network standpoint. I don't know, this is kind of where my mind has been going because I really do feel like specifically coming to America when I was seeing people saying, you know, the whole um, militarization of children in Africa because they had that scene, you know, the kids that were preparing for war, you know, that is nothing to laugh about. You know, I'm from this country, we deal with that. And it's like, that I totally understand. Like, I understand that. I, I, I understand why you'd feel a visceral reaction to seeing that. But it's almost like comedy, as most comedians have said, you can say, you used to be able to say just about whatever you wanted in the 80s, right? But it's like now everything's kind of a fine line and a fine dance. And I just Mm -hmm. wonder at any point, are we going to be able to just kind of fully enjoy media Mm -hmm. um, in its fullness from the corny to the gangster, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. And I I just feel like we're going to always kind of be doing a tug of war of what's right, yeah. what's offensive, what's not. We're just in this weird kind of space right now when it comes to media. Yeah, if you watch, uh, bringing up the 80s, if you watch Airplane now, that movie offensive, was offensive. straight up <laughs> offensive, but it was hilarious, but it's never called into question. I mean, they taking Dr. Shu, Dr. Seuss off the shelves. Appreciate right. the cancel culture, but... Uh, but, but no, they you know, took airplane, themselves off the shelves. Yeah, they took themselves off the shelves, just like yeah. the Aunt Jemima and the Uncle Ben's, even though they back on the shelves. But, right. um, you know, and of course, uh, you know, this is through a culture lens, Miss Tiffany Wright. Is there anything that you would like to give us any parting words before yes. uh, you leave? And I go ahead and give you a little outro music. Yeah, <laughs> um, I just want to say, as Black people, we deserve to see joy and love, abundance and freedom. We deserve to live in joy, love, abundance and freedom. And be mindful of that. Be mindful of that if you're a creator. Be mindful of that if you are a consumer. Um, all the stories that you you read and watch and listen to don't have to be around abuse and struggle mm. and injustice um, and oppression. Um, and, and so be mindful of that. If you are in a space where you are intentionally trying to grow and let go of things and heal and become a more optimistic person, watching things that are centered around the opposite of those emotional experiences are likely not going to help propel you into mm-hmm. that space that you want to be. So mm-hmm. not saying don't watch it because it's also great to support black creators, no matter what kind of mm-hmm. stories they're putting on the company. Mm-hmm. 
or what, but if they're putting out stories that you want to support. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you know, feed the people. Um, however, for your own psychological well-being, just mm -hmm. be mindful. Mm -hmm. Understand and uh, be Amber? mindful. Great, you know, that's just that's a great mm -hmm. ending yeah. because I think I think that's one thing that we as a people need to stop kind of operating an autopilot. I think that mm -hmm. happens a lot, and that's why we're probably on our phone so much. It's kind of an autopilot response to grab your phone and to scroll. Autopilot response to sit and watch and something for twelve hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I do think that being mindful is something that we need to really take on as a mantra um, in general. Um, I just think that in of itself, it does, self care doesn't have to be go get your nails done and go get a massage. It literally is be mindful about what you're consuming, you're eating, Absolutely. you're thinking, you're you know, listening to all that. So I think that's a great, great ending to today. I think so as well. And obviously another great show. Thank you, Tiffany, for joining Thank us. Thank you so um, much, babes. And this was just awesome. And of course, next week we'll be doing another recorded episode. But this time we'll actually have a special guest, another special guest for you another that has not been on the uh, has not been on the show. But I think you guys want to tune in for that. So of course, thank you guys for tuning in. Peace, love, and power. All right, y'all. Peace. Thank you so much, Tiff.